Night Hammer Fantasy. Welcome back to Vidhammer. I'm Spudlow, and in this video I'm going over the painting of my scratch-built Hell Pit Abomination. Or, not so much scratch-built, but just put together out of a bunch of other stuff. Start off the film here as I go over Scrag Brown being painted on the body section. This is actually the remnants of a griffin from the Island of Blood set that I've filed all of the scales off of and rearranged the claws and one of the rear feet to go underneath the body. I've also attached a couple of spare rat ogre arms to the torso as well as a rat ogre upper body and an additional head going onto the top. I'm going over those parts now with Bestigore flesh color. The right arm is actually a Doom Scythe from the 40k game that I've attached to his arm and hooked up a warp energy condenser on his back to power it with. I figured it makes it look like a large mechanical grapple. And of course, several tails just to give it a Cthulhu-esque look. On the centerpiece, that's Valor Brown for three shields that he wears as a belt. Bolt gun metal for the claw and the other metal pieces sticking out of his arms and that other warp condenser of some kind that's growing out of his shoulder as well. For the claws on his feet, I go for some Valor Brown and put Bleached Bone for the toenails and fingernails. This large claw was left over from a Plague Claw Catapult part of a Warp Lightning Cannon I made, so I gave it to him as some Wolverine type of bone claws. And the condenser, which came off of a spare warp fire thrower that I had. I throw in a banner for good measure, though I don't really know what I'm going to write on it yet. I'll figure it out at some point. With Talon Flesh, I go over the ends of the tail pieces as well as a little touch-up on the face and hands as well. I detail some of the metallic areas with Hashet Copper to give them a good contrast. My first coat over the warp stone pieces on his arms and stuck in his shoulder were goblin green. Used the same color for some accents of his large gripping claw, though I'll go back and change the color of the warp stone later. I changed my mind on that one. A few details with bolt gun metal and some more bleached bone. Scorch Brown for the pole of the multiple standards he's wearing. 
then Valor Brown for the main piece of parchment on the front of that standard he's holding. Some rotting flesh to go over some of the cloth pieces he has wrapped around his chest and around his arms. piece of parchment on the front which comes from the plague monks and a few of the smaller parchment pieces attached to the sides of it as well. Pieces of piping is a combination of Valor Brown and Eschen Gray. Once it's washed over it gives it a nice worn piece of rubber piping look to it. accents on the piping with some more hashed copper. goblin green to bring out the warp energy portion of the cloth. Some mercurite red for the tongue, some more bleach bone for the teeth. Some evil sun scarlet for a blood effect and it's also what I used for the eyes. Small Talern Flesh highlight for the face, and that's some Emperor's Children pink color to bring out the veins on the uh, on his arm and then around this little sack thing that I put around his midsection. I have no idea where I got those pieces from, I just tossed them in there. Metal and more bleached bone to accent the standard. And then we begin washing, starting with Agrax Earthshade for all of the metal pieces and his bone claws as well. earth shade on the piping and on the cloth pieces he has as well as the standard. Reklin Flesh Wash for all of the body pieces, exposed skin pieces.
back to Agrax Earthshade to wash the standard. And the claws as well. Then I move over to the base starting with this stone that I cut from the bottom of the Chieftain from the Isle of Blood set. Chieftain I modified to be my warlord from the previous painting video. As I cut this off the bottom of him, decided to use it as part of my base, along with this very small cute looking rat, who of course has a skull since, well, it's not Warhammer unless you have at least one skull on every model you own. I use camo green for most of the small rattling and go back to eschen gray for the stone and to paint one of these rats in this group of four. Then scrag brown for two others and finally scorch brown for the one on top. I give the stone and the rats a quick wash of Agrax Earthshade as I move on to the flocking. I dry brush over the stone with Eschen Gray mixed with a little bit of Skull White and back over the front load rat with just a standard color of the camo green to bring out some more of the detail. And a slight bit of skull white to let the ruby shine and bring out the skull a little bit as well. Some Talern flesh highlights the rat's hands and feet, tails and ears. I start the flocking, putting some large stones in, then I move on to the first smaller piece of gravel that I'm going to use. put a few spots of some larger rock, slightly larger rock, to give this a little bit of difference on the eye when you look at it. Probably could have done the larger rock, the larger gravel first and it would have been fine, but it seemed to work out okay. I come back over with some scrag brown to give it a little more uniform look and then wash with Agrax Earthshade. I highlight a few parts with Vestigor Flesh. Then I use the Camo Green just to go around the edges that's going to be next to where the grass is going to be for this step just to make the transition not as hard on the eye. And I use some standard Games Workshop grass and head back over to the model once I have it mounted. For the smoke coming out of the condenser, I decided to go with the green smoke since that works with the warp stone technology, I suppose. Starting with Dark Angel's green, 
then going to goblin green, and goblin green with a little bit of white mixed in with it. I continue highlighting the rest of the model, taking all of the metallic pieces with a little bit of mithril. And that's just dry brushed lightly over those areas, as well as the hatchet copper areas, going back over just with a light dry brush to pick up the details. I hit his flesh parts for the upper body with Talern flesh. Again, this is just light dry brushing to bring out the highlights of the muscles and such. I do this over the base, the main body part as well, though I end up regretting this afterward because it makes the lower section look too bright in comparison to the rest of the model. And I was thinking about going back and repainting the lower section, but I came up with a better idea as it turns out. and. Uh, it all worked okay. Though it does bring out the muscles well, it makes that bottom side look too dark or look too bright compared to the rest because I go over the fur sections for the upper body with Scorch Brown to make them have more contrast against the rest of the upper body area. This is a Balor Brown dry brush to highlight over the upper parts of his claws. Brings out the texture. And the same for the standard, just a very quick, very general dry brushing of the standard. Then I come back with a little bit lighter version, a little skull white mixed in with the Balor Brown to do another dry brush. Give it as worn of a cloth look as I could. Also for the piece of parchment he has on the front where his writing is going to be. That's where I decided to put his namesake. I go back over his fingernails and claws since the wash darkens them up quite a bit. And then I change the warpstone color over to the Dark Angel's green. Then I come back and do a dry brush with the goblin green to bring out the colors. I even follow up with a wash of that color I can't remember. Athonian camo shade, that's it. Now to fix the body. I decided to go with a leopard print. So I start out with spots of Balor Brown and I come back over them with the somewhat semicircular pattern that you find indicative of a lot of leopard prints that I saw off of Google Images. And I just colored in these spots. They don't always form complete circles. They're usually like two semicircles very close together or a circle that goes almost all the way around. And that's the pattern that they have on their body. And when it goes to their legs, it ends up being just simple stripes. So, or dots as it would be. So I decided to go with the same pattern and make these colored in circles for the body. And then when I go to the lower legs, I do just some spots of Scorch Brown. It darkened up the body and still left the details present. And everything deserves a name, and I think this guy has earned his. And everybody loves a little bit of sweet loving. Just an afterthought, but a good one. And there he is. Next time I play, he'll be able to make his tabletop debut and hopefully bring a little bit of sweet loving of his own. That's about all for this video. In recapping, I can't even count how many hours I spent on this thing. 
do me a favor and subscribe, like the video if you want to see more, and feel free to send me some comments. Till next time, from VidAmmer, keep painting. <laughs>